Then I'll do the loaded omelet biscuit. Just the biscuit, please. Cool, thanks, sir. Ew. Don't even tell me you don't love some hardies. It is a brisk, chilly morning. The wind's kicking out of the south at about 15 mile an hour steady. Probably gust of 20, 25, but the last four or five days in a row, we've had a huge north blow where we've had 10 to 20 foot waves on Lake Superior crashing along the shoreline. So I'm hoping that will set us up with some good fishing for the next couple days. Well, more than likely, I will be camping at some point on this trip, but to start off the day, I'm gonna try a couple different spots on the surf and see if I can get a productive one dialed in first. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this dog is happy to be here. Where's the ducks? Where's the birds? <laughs> oh, there's a bite, guys. There's a bite. There's a bite. That's a bite. That's a fish on, baby. That's a fish on, baby. There we go. Feels like a coho. It feels like a little scrappy coho. He's gaining size. He's gaining size as we speak. <laughs> This might be a steely. Now that he's getting close to the bank, he's fighting a little bit harder now. Here we go. Guys, he's coming up. It's a nice fish. He's making a wake. He's making a shark wake. It's a decent fish for sure. Ali, step back. Ali, Ali, step back. Let's see what it is. What do we have? It's a steely. I think, it, oh, it's a splake. Oh my goodness. It's a huge splake. It's a big splake. Oh my goodness gracious. That is a beautiful fish. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we have a beautiful splake, dude. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so delicious. A beautiful splake to start our day, guys. That fish hammered that spawn bag. This fish is gonna be absolutely delicious to eat over the fire tonight. Well, I'm gonna bleed this fish out well, that way it'll be properly prepared for our meal tonight. But we have a splake for dinner, and now we're gonna see if we can catch a coho, and if we do, we'll have a coho omelet for breakfast tomorrow with homemade biscuits. <laughs> Okay, let me show you my rig here, guys. I have a Nova Tackle, nine foot, six inch rod. This is a moderate action, 10 to 25 pound. I have 20 pound test braid as my main line, a two ounce pyramid sinker on my braid, small bead to stop my sinker from going through my swivel. And I have about a four foot piece of 10 pound test fluorocarbon down to a size six hook, a spawn bag with fresh steelhead eggs and one split shot about a foot up above my hook. So how this works is I cast this big weight out, the big weight holds it on the bottom, then the sinker spreads it out so it's stealthy. And then my bag floats up and it's about a foot up above the bottom. And that's the rig. Let's cast it back out, see if we can catch another one. Well, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our fish flayed up here, and then we're gonna head to the next spot. Mission accomplished here. We got a fish for dinner, we have a fish to cook tonight. Now we're gonna go keep exploring. Oh, guys, we're gonna fish on, baby. Oh, missed him. Missed him. Oh, oh, oh. Fish on, guys. Fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Fish on, baby. There we go. Oh yeah, we got a fish on, baby. We got a fish on, baby. He's swimming at me, it looks like a coho. Oh, look at this, guys. This looks like a beautiful, oh, look at that thing. It's a nice little coho, guys. Oh, yes, look at that. That's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful eater. We are now gonna have a coho omelet for breakfast tomorrow morning. My goodness, look at that, guys. Look at that beautiful flay. We have a cold, cold Dr. Pepper, and we are headed for a drive with nowhere to be today, and we can just take our time and go as we please. This is one of my all-time favorite days, just bombing along the shoreline of the Great Lakes, taking our time, stopping and fishing, and just checking things out and exploring. Oh my goodness, my stomach just dropped. Oh my goodness, these boards feel rotting right here almost. These boards are spongy right here. Look at this, Woo. 
Ooh, I don't do well with heights here, people. Oh my gosh, I do not do well with heights. Look at this. That is so gorgeous. Look at the different troughs out there. Now you guys can really see what I'm talking about. There's like holes and the fish use those holes to corral bait, especially in the shallow water. But look at how beautiful this is. My goodness. It is time for an adventure. Beautiful rock cliffs, ice formations on the cliffs, nice sand beach. Looks like there's no ice, so we're gonna have no problem fishing. And this is just gorgeous. It looks like there's some deep water too. With my polarized sunglasses, I can see a real nice drop off that we're gonna be able to cast into. So, man, I'm excited. That is just seriously breathtaking. We have the entire beach all to ourselves. Let's get some lines out there. Well, this place is stunning. It's hard to get good shots right now because the sun is dropping behind the cliffs, so they're all casted with a shadow. And I'm having a hard time fishing this place as well. There are some deep troughs, but I can't get my baits out there far enough into the deeper troughs. The inside trough that I have to wade through, that's about four or five feet deep, is close to 100 yards long. And just to get it out past that, it's a little bit too far. Now, first thing in the morning, I think this spot could be productive. But middle of the day, with it being bright sun like this, I really don't see there being fish in that shallow water that I'm fishing. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it another 10, 20 minutes, let these spawn bags kind of fade out a bit, and then we'll head to the next spot. arrived at our final location of the day. This is where we're setting up camp for the night. I decided to lug the Dutch oven to do our biscuits in tonight, tomorrow morning. I'm gonna get a couple lines out here, then we'll probably set up camp, but hopefully we can catch a fish this evening. Well now, it's time to grade our bedding area. We gotta pick all the rocks out, get it nice and flat. A nice firm mattress. Okay, the tent is up, my bedding's put together, now it's time to get a fire going. We gotta build up some hot coals before we get our biscuits going in the Dutch oven. Okay, well I think I can use this for a table here. Oh yeah, look at that table. That's some custom woodworking right there. Well, look at this, we have a nice bundle of some dry twigs. That'll be a perfect fire starter. Doesn't get any better than that. Well, you can see these dry sticks burn hot and they burn quick. They do not last long, so once you get the momentum of your fire really going, it's important that you keep moving up and keep building bigger before you lose your momentum. Okay, I'm gonna get a pot of water here. I'm gonna start boiling this to get our biscuits ready. And yes, you can tell last time, this got a little hot in the fire. Oh 
Well, it's just been an incredibly beautiful night. Beautiful sunset. We have an awesome fire going right now. Camp is set up and I'm just about to get some dinner going. But I have not had a single bite since I've been fishing this spot. And I don't know if that's a bad thing for tomorrow or if it just doesn't matter because these fish can move in this shallow water overnight for sure. So we're just gonna play it out and see what happens, but we're definitely committed to fishing this spot. Now I'm gonna take both of these rods out with me and try to kill two birds with one stone. It's a long wait out here, so I've been casting them out at the same time when I go out. Well, I waded through the first trough. The first trough was just below my wader line. Now I'm coming up to the second sandbar. So if we had waves, they'd be breaking right where I'm standing right now. Rod number one, there's rod number two. We're heading back to camp. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the bones out and I'm gonna take the skin off and I'm gonna make some little splake nuggets here, guys. I'm just gonna run my knife right along the pin bones there, pop off that back strap piece, and then I'll be able to take that pin bone line out. So we'll have some nice boneless splake nuggets. Okay guys, I'm gonna start making our bread here. So I'm just gonna do it in a plastic bag. I got this trick from Luke on the Outdoor Boys channel, and it's a great trick. It works really well when you're making homemade breads out here. Okay, we're going in with our yeast mixture. Well, our biscuits are just about finished cooking. I'm gonna get the grate on, and it's time to go on with our fish. Gotta get a nice flat level surface here, which can be kind of a challenge sometimes when you're cooking over a fire. But you know, one thing about camping, one thing about camping and cooking is that you just have to make work with whatever you have and things are probably gonna go wrong. So you just gotta go into it with that mindset and you'll be all right. And now we go on with our fish. Okay, let's take a peek at our biscuits here. Oh yeah, look at those boys. We'll let them go for probably another 20 minutes. I wanna make sure that they get nice and golden crispy on each side. And our fish is sizzling, and we are living life at camp. Oliver's passed out next to the heat. Okay, here we go. Going in for a biscuit, and we're going in for a big plate of splay, baby. <laughs> here we go. Fish fry at our tent camp with homemade biscuits. Check that out. It's really hard for me to describe the flavor of splake. It's very similar to brook trout. The meat is very firm. It's full of different oils and fats, and it's absolutely delicious. It's one of my favorite fish to eat. Coho and splake and whitefish. What about whitefish? And walleye, I mean, come on. We're so blessed here in Michigan with so many different options. But here we go. <laughs> Puts a smile on my face every time. And can you hear the waves crashing in? The wind hasn't picked up on the shore where I'm at, but there must be some wind blowing offshore because we have some rollers coming in now. Last time I cooked biscuits in the last episode that you saw, I totally botched them, but I think I got these right. Oh, whoa, got those ones. Now that is a biscuit, wow. Okay, the last step is, is I'm gonna bury these hot coals as best as I can. That way I'll be able to start a fire quick and easy in the morning. Then we'll put this big fiery log right on top just for a little extra insulation. It's getting cold out here. I'd say it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Come on, buddy. Let's get in our sleeping bag. <laughs> and look at this. He's all cozy in his sleeping bag. I'm gonna get him zipped up and we're ready for sleep. And I'm excited to fish in the morning. I really don't know what to expect, especially after we didn't have a bite tonight but that could mean absolutely nothing. There could be all kinds of fish in here first thing tomorrow morning, or there could be nothing, but we're gonna find out. I'm having a real hard time getting warm right now. I just checked the temperature and it's 14 degrees Fahrenheit right now, but that's okay. We have fish to catch tomorrow morning and we'll make it through the night. Well, good morning, buddy. Good morning. Well, good morning. Welcome back. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to leave this sleeping bag. It is 11 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and it's time to get up and get some lines in the water. And we're starting the morning by roasting our wading boots. They are absolutely frozen solid, as are my waders here. We gotta heat them up, guys. Going for a little ice bath this morning.
Well, I just had one heck of a bite on this rod. It absolutely folded the rod over and it was peel and drag. I don't know how it didn't stick, but he gone. Well, camp is packed up and it's been about an hour and a half since I had my one and only bite this morning. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull these rods and I'm gonna go check out one more spot on this adventure. And even if I don't end up fishing, I'm still at least determined to cook this coho omelet. But it's just too windy to cook down here on the beach this morning. We got a fish on, baby. We got a fish on, guys. We got a fish on now. Come on, baby. This guy's getting hammered. Oh my gosh. Fish on, baby. There we go, guys. Fish on. Fish on. <laughs> we just got set up in this spot, too, guys. Just got set up in this spot. See what we have here, guys. I don't know what this is. Here we go, we're coming up, guys. We're coming up, he's beelining. I think it might be a steely. Oh, I see shark fins, I see, I see shark fins. What do we have? Oh, what is this? What is this, guys? I have no idea what this fish is. It, it looked like a brown trout or an Atlantic. I'm not even sure what this fish is. Man, is this thing fighting, oh man. I tell you what, he got to the shore and he's just been scrapping. It's a laker? It's a laker. I, it's a brown. No, it's a brown. Guys, it's a big brown. Oh my goodness. Look at that brown trout. Oh my goodness. Look at that brown trout. Oh my gosh. That is a stud brown trout. I can probably count on one hand the amount of browns that I've caught out of Lake Superior. And for Superior, this is a stud. I am so pumped to have caught this fish, but I'm gonna get him right back in the water. There he goes. There's just nothing more rewarding than working hard, sticking with it, not giving up, and having it pay off. To be honest, I wasn't expecting that fish, but I didn't give up. I came down, tried one more spot before I had to head back home, and just as I got done making a fire, I caught my biggest brown ever out of Lake Superior, and that was just a beautiful fish. We got one on, guys. This rod just got clocked, and it's peel and drag. Running down the shore, baby. We got one on, baby. Oh my goodness. This is a good fish, guys. This is definitely a good fish. This thing has some shoulders. Oh, look at that thing head shaking. Look at him head shaking. We have now caught a brown trout, a steelhead, a coho, and a splake on this trip. Look at that fish. A nice male. I'm gonna get him right back in the water. A little multi-species action. A beautiful steelhead, guys. This is a nice buck, and I'm gonna get him right back. Get him in the little river current there is, and there he goes, back to his home. From going nearly 24 hours without a bite, and now we've caught a beautiful brown and a beautiful steely. What a day, what a trip. Okay, so first, I'm gonna cook a big pan of bacon. I brought some bacon in and I'm gonna fry this omelet in bacon grease. I'm gonna cook this bacon, I'm gonna cook our coho in some tin foil as well, and then we're gonna get our omelet going. Okay, so first here, I'm gonna take one of our flays and I'm gonna season it up. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of salt and a little bit of McCormick's garlic and herb seasoning. And then we'll get a few slices of butter going here, put it right on top. Probably two little thin slices per flay should do the trick. Now I'm gonna wrap this up the best I can. This is the only tin foil sheet I have. And then we'll place this right on the fire. Okay, our bacon is done. I'm gonna try to save some of this grease for our omelet, but I'm also gonna use a little bit to saute our mushrooms and onions first. Okay, let's check our coho. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. I can already tell it's done. As soon as this fish starts to flake all the way to the skin, you know it's done. You don't want to overcook it. That coho is just unbelievable. Oh my God. I'm only gonna use one filet for our omelet and then I'm gonna eat the other filet myself, just how it is. Okay, I'm gonna add some mushrooms and onions here. Probably go a little heavier on the onions. 
And then we'll add some coho on top. Oh, look at that, baby. Coho omelet over the campfire. A little thick cut bacon for a good boy. You're not gonna turn that down, are you, bud? <laughs> I haven't ate anything since our splake meal last night, but this is delicious. I know I'm really hungry, but that coho meat is sweet. There's zero fishy taste. You wouldn't think fish would go well in an omelet, but this rocks. I will definitely be doing this again at home. That was delicious. We couldn't get it done at our spot this morning, but we relocated, caught a beautiful brown, ate a kick butt omelet, and this day has just turned right around. Well, we accomplished what we set out to do, made a killer omelet, caught a couple fish, and ended on a very, very high note. But that's all I have this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in our next video.